Welcome back to Brombird News. This is episode 38. We're back from Portland, Oregon, which is just an amazing place. Everyone is so aware and in sync with nature. You know, we're visiting one of the Audubon centers, a sanctuary actually, and in about 15 minutes, we saw at least 10 people from different backgrounds of a different age group stop by and bring injured birds. I don't know where they found them, but it was amazing and really encouraging to see how much people cared about birds and nature around them. Enjoy it. And here I am in Portland, Oregon. This is my first time on the West Coast, so I am super excited to see what kind of birds they have here, what kind of trees. I mean, check this out. This is huge. I've never been anywhere close to a tree this size. Um, and we're visiting one of the Audubon centers here. We brought them a couple of feeders since we're attending a trade show. So we thought, why not and donate a um, couple of squirrel busters here, see what kind of squirrels they get here. And then I'm taking our wonderful Brombird Care, customer care ladies on a trail. We're gonna go and find some birds and just walk around and check it out. So let's come and see it. So we're going on one of these trails. I hope we don't get lost. So here we are at the uh, Audubon. This is the Audubon Center, the right? Audubon okay. Society of okay. Yes. Yeah. So this is Rick. He's the facility manager, and he's going to tell us all about this wonderful place. Thank you, Rick, for sp sparing a couple of minutes. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, well, we have 150 acres that we've acquired through uh, uh, the 30s. Uh, the Pittock uh, Sanctuary that used to belong to the Pittock family that has the Pittock Mansion. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, then uh, we have uh, about total six miles of trail five five to six that's where and, we're actually gonna go uh, we have well over uh, 10,000 almost 15,000 members really uh, we were found in 1902 okay. as a charter uh, we are a very large charter okay but the um, as, as far as this in 1899 this was all burned out really yeah there, there wasn't anything here except for our duck furs. The duck furs are about 350 years old. That's my favorite. Wow, what a beauty. And she's slowly but surely. Yeah. We're in the music world with Sid Vicious, but uh, mm -hmm. when she came in, uh, we got her when she was two years old, uh, broken wing. And so she'll never fly right now. She has arthritis, she's getting older, 24. Hi there. Hi there. Hey, we need a male, yeah. male voice. Well, thank you, Rick, oh, so welcome. much for this wonderful interview and a wonderful tour. And um, we'll be online next week. Keep, keep making uh, the squirrel busters. We will, and then we're <laughs> our show as well. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> Quite a number of folks managing nectar feeders within the geographical range of the ruby-throated hummingbird are reporting a lot less birds this spring. One shop in Houston, Texas, for instance, has had over the years regular visitations of almost 35 ruby throats throughout the spring and early summer, followed by the breeding of three or four pairs until the fall. Last year he only had six and this year even less. His bird feeding friends report similar observations. This certainly doesn't jibe, though, with accounts from hummingbird monitoring sites showing a huge increase in the North American populations of ruby-throated hummingbirds over the last four decades. So what's going on? Well, not everybody's reporting the decline in this species, so it could indeed just be a regional phenomenon. In 2015, for instance, sightings of ruby throats were down 58% from the previous year in coastal states from Texas to South Carolina, but that was not the case everywhere. Keep in mind that these little birds not only spend their winters in southern Mexico and in Central America, but also make a grueling non-stop migration flight across the Gulf of Mexico in both directions. In either of these situations, these hummers could encounter changes in the flowering of their nectar sources or the populations of the insects they eat, possibly due to climate change. Since we're now dealing with the beginning of summer and the ruby throat's breeding season, 
I doubt they are remaining south and awaiting favorable weather for migration. And ruby throats are also quite faithful to their breeding territories, so they likely haven't gone elsewhere. Thus, it does remain possible that these birds could have encountered some sort of mass casualty due to bad weather during migration, or on the wintering ground, some unexpected use of pesticides that killed off the birds and or their food sources, or even some sort of avian disease. But all of that is pure speculation. What this really means is that ornithologists counting ruby-throated hummingbirds this summer, fall, and winter should be able to get a handle whether there's any impact of the disappearance of these birds locally in certain regions on the species' overall population numbers. If indeed there is a decline, the next step will be to find the cause. Let's not panic yet, though. This will not be the first time that we see a downward blip in a bird's numbers, only to see them bounce back a couple of years later. With all the bird poop on roads, cars, and buildings, do you ever wonder how birds manage to keep their nests clean? I mean, with three to four chicks and mom and dad, things can get messy pretty quickly. Well, it turns out that different birds deal with this matter in different ways. For many species, when the birds are young, their poop comes out in the sack, which then is carried away by mom and dad somewhere away from the nest. For other species, just after a few days of being born, the birds learn how to move to the edge of the nest, lift their tails, and bombs away. Well, of course, the sack option is the cleanest because poop can be disposed of somewhere far away from the nest. Can you imagine newborns not needing diapers? The Gurney's Pitta has been on the brink of extinction for years in Thailand. With only one male left in captivity, there was a little hope for the species until two females showed up in the jungle around Krabi. The Thailand Conservation Office has now brought the male into the woods. He is in the cage and he is being monitored by a camera to see if he would call out to females. The hope is to capture the two females, then set up a special love house for the three birds and that way bring the population back to its sustainable numbers. I don't know if your town has a public bird feeding area, mine doesn't, but I think if it's all maintained properly, it would be a great idea to have one, especially for all the people who love birds but can't feed them in their backyards or they live in apartments. And this is what the Fraser Coast Regional Council is thinking of doing, opening up a public bird feeding spot on Fraser Coast, Australia. And they actually want to hear what residents have to say. One of the reasons for such an attraction is to bring more tourists to the area. Some of the councillors are against the project, fearing that large flocks of birds will cause and spread disease. But I believe it's all about the maintenance. Some days I really wish I could just move to Arizona, especially in the summer. There's always something happening there. The 25th annual Southwest Wings Festival in Sierra Vista is scheduled for the 3rd to the 6th of August. And so much to do there. Overnight expeditions, visits to all sorts of canyons, chasing rarities trips, looking for jaguars and mountain lions. And the list of bird species is just to die for. Check out their website. This week we're giving away a Squirrel Buster Classic. Let's check out the top five. I'm personally thrilled that Kat Foster is a winner this week because she's been recovering from knee surgery and hasn't been able to move around as much. Kat, I hope this cheers you up. A reminder for everyone, please send the names of the birds that appear on your photographs. Send us pictures to photos at brombirdcare.com. Well, that's it. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed some of my travel log. Have a beautiful week and goodbye.